Hello, I am Dr. Mohit Kira, Professor of Urology at Baylor College of Medicine. Today I'll be discussing testosterone treatment options. At this point, I'm going to assume that you've already had the diagnosis of low testosterone, also known as hypogonadism. I'm also going to assume that you've discussed the risks and benefits of low testosterone and therapy. There are many treatment options that are available. I tell my patients, think of it in four categories. There are patches, there are gels, there are injections, and there are pellets. And we must find the formulation that's best for you. Now I also tell my patients to think about the four C's when deciding which formulation is best for them. The four C's consist of cost, compliance, convenience, and concentration. Many times these gels are not covered by insurance and we have to find the one that's covered by your insurance and that's the one we typically prescribe. We also know that injections tend to be cheaper than gels and sometimes we have to switch patients from a gel to an injectable. Compliance is important. If patients forget to put a gel on every day, sometimes we may recommend an injection every two weeks. Convenience, some patients don't like to put a gel or a patch on every day, so we switch them to an uh, injection or a pellet. And finally, it's important to have a good testosterone concentration. I tell my patients there's no point in taking the medication if it doesn't improve your serum testosterone levels. One formulation that's not commonly used is the buckle formulation. Basically, it's a small patch that's placed on the gum below the lip, and this is changed every 12 hours. This is also known as striant. The side effects of this formulation include gum irritation in 9% of patients and bitter taste in 4% of patients. The patches are still used, and these patches are applied on the back, the abdomen, the upper arms, and the thighs. These patches are also known as androderm. There are two types of patches. They come in a two gram and a four gram formulation. Side effects include skin irritation and itching in 17% of patients and skin blisters in 6% of patients. There are numerous gels on the market and here are some of the more common types of gels that are available. Realize that these gels may penetrate the skin differently amongst different patients. So the take home message is that if one gel is not working, you should try another gel as it may be more effective. These gels are typically applied on the upper arm, the shoulder, some are applied under the arm, some are applied on the inner thigh. It's important to realize that you must avoid skin to skin contact with another person because there is a risk for transference where they may absorb the gel. There's also a new formulation, relatively new, which is placed inside the nose. This is called Natesto, where one pump is placed per nostril three times a day. This testosterone formulation does have some side effects, including headache, runny nose, bloody nose, and nasal pain in approximately 4% of patients. The most commonly used formulations now are the short-acting injectables. The most common types are testosterone cypionate and testosterone enanthate. Testosterone cypionate is made out of cottonseed oil, that's the carrier, and it has greater fluid retention than testosterone enanthate. Now you can apply these or administer these uh, injections in several ways. You can give a once every two week injection, which is 200 milligrams, once a week injection, which is 100 milligrams, or twice a week, which we prefer, which is 50 milligrams. The side effects include pain at the injection site, elevation in red blood cell count, and mood fluctuation. I'd like to show you a slide depicting what happens when you give large doses of testosterone injections, which is the red line. If you give a large dose for, say, once every two weeks, what happens is you get a spike in the testosterone level roughly on day three, and then you get a crash typically roughly around day 14 to 21. When you use the injectables more frequently at smaller doses, you don't see these large peaks and troughs. Also, the gels and the patches tend to have a more stable testosterone level. There are also long-acting injections as well. This is also known as a VED. This injection is administered once every 10 weeks. The side effects include pulmonary oil microembolism, which is quite rare, roughly 8 in 3,500 cases, 
severe anaphylaxis, which is an allergic reaction, in roughly 2 out of 3,500 cases, acne in roughly 5%, and pain at the injection site in less than 5% of patients. One drawback is that the patient must be in the doctor's office for roughly 30 minutes after the injection to make sure that there are no side effects. There's also testosterone pellets, and these are long-acting pellets that are placed in the side of the hip that last typically every three to four months. These pellets are placed in an office procedure where the patient lies down on their side, and we use a numbing medication to numb up the skin. We make a small three millimeter incision, and these pellets are placed under the skin into the fat. Typically, these patients will have these pellets, as I mentioned earlier, for three to four months, and they dissolve on their own. In summary, you should discuss the risks and benefits of testosterone prior to initiating testosterone therapy. Patients should take into consideration the four C's when deciding which formulation is best for them. The four C's include cost, compliance, convenience, and concentration. And finally, if one testosterone formulation is not effective, try switching to a different formulation. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.